Morning, morning folks. How are we all today? Welcome aboard. Andy Truck Davy and the Truck coming to you today from Glasgow. Where it's not a bad day actually. Let's see. Let's have a look. Ah, it's about uh, 11, 12 degrees, and it's no bad. Weather's no bad at all. Okay, so, seems to be a fair few of you there. So let's get this support underway. All right, we'll start with the coronavirus update, as we do every day. Then we'll move on to the news review. Some blocks of this light out. All right, so... Coronavirus update, these are the figures for yesterday, 29th to the 3rd, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached their shores, 1,810,709, and that was plus 3,182 new tests from Sunday and Monday. Tested positive, 217,497 since the pandemic reached their shores, and that's plus 352 new infections from Sunday to Monday. All right, in hospital, there are 259 COVID patients, and that's doing five. In the intensive care units, there are 22 COVID patients, and that stays the same. Vaccinated, there have been 2,409,826 people vaccinated, and that was plus 24,117 from Sunday to Monday, of which I was one. And a... Of that 2,409,826, 326,263 have had both injections. Alright, deaths. I'm happy to report there were no additional deaths recorded from Sunday to Monday. Alright, and that hospital count stays at 7,584. Community and hospital death combined sits at 9,897. We don't get an update on that until Wednesday. Okie dokie. Right, Monday started with a mixed bag in the rags. Um, the Scottish editions went on salmon and the new Alapa party. And the English rags eh, that are issued in Scotland go on COVID-19 passports and second jag rollout. All right. Monday, Gene Freeman eh, tells us all that the vaccine rollout will slow down in the month of April. This has to do with problems with... Um, getting the AstraZeneca jab from the Serum Institute of India. The UK is waiting on another 5 million doses from there. Uh, but, as I've, we've already discussed, the um, Serum Institute of India has turned its attention to um, vaccinating the population of India. And there's a billion people living in India, so that's a biggie. All right. But it's hoped that... Uh, uh, the licensing of the Moderna vaccine can help with the shortfall, all right? Monday, and it's the start of the first full week of the election campaign, right? And it's well underway. The Tories are pledging to build 40,000 uh, social rented homes over the lifetime of the next parliament, claiming that construction will be a big part of the COVID recovery. Um, no very impressive, is it? Because the SNP have already promised to build an additional 70,000 affordable homes over the life of the next parliament. So, you know, the Tories are a wee bit doing the, the couldn't there, you know. Um, Labour, um, a, the Red Tories, pledged to tackle mental health issues and ramping up of a, cancer services. The SNP have already pledged an additional £250 million a year to a, um, a, mental health services. And they've already kick-started the cancer services. All right. Um, eh. Now, the Greens, they also went on mental health. But I don't know what the Greens are going on mental health for. Because as part of the budget negotiations done recently with Kate Forbes, the Lib Dems and the Greens both um, encouraged the Scottish Government to give extra money to mental health care in order to get their budget passed. That's the £250 million a year I've just spoken about. All right. Um, a, a, Sarwar, a, um, a, a, 
Oh, and Sarwa also went on about 7,000 undiagnosed cases of cancer last year due to the pandemic. Hey, I'd like to be shot his crystal ball. 7,000 undiagnosed cases. If they're undiagnosed, how do you know somebody's got cancer or no? Wow. I want to show you his crystal ball. I guess they're taking it on previous year's figures and, and sort of guesstimating. You know what I mean? We will be any and the Lib Dems. He wants a, um, the Indy Drive drop to concentrate on rebuilding the economy after COVID. Independence is vital in rebuilding the economy after COVID. Because um, if we're no independent, then the amount of time, money and energy we get and the direction our economy goes in will be dictated by a government we don't vote for and a country we don't bloody well live in. That's the whole point of independence, that we make our own bloody decisions. We wallies a wee bit tapped, but we know that. That's why I can't watch him, because he's just a, a, a blithering idiot. You know... Right, now, the SNP Spring Conference came, a digital spring conference came to an end there at the uh, Monday. Um, over the over the course of the con uh, conference, delegates voted to um, up the state pension to three hundred and fifty-five pound and an independent Scotland. They also voted to ensure that children uh, get uh, every child gets a laptop or a tablet to ensure that they've got access to digital learning. And um, the first minister pledged in a closing speech yesterday to tackle child poverty and up the new child payment here in Scotland from £10 to £20, which was another demand of the Greens. So the Greens and the SNP seem to be singing it for the same hymn sheet. Right. Now, Monday, KPMG predicts that the Scottish economy will grow faster and outstrip UK growth and the recovery from COVID. KPMG says the Scottish economy to return to pre-COVID levels of production in the next two years. But they warn of a um, increased unemployment as Brexit hits and the, the wind down of the government furlough scheme. Davy says, you don't need to be an economist to work that one out, Jesus Christ. Didn't they need KPMG to tell us that? But if we really want to recover from this bloody pandemic and we want to get through the Brexit mess, we really need to put independence at the forefront of everything. The First Minister says child poverty is going to be her number one priority. Her number one priority should be independence. Simple as that, because none of the rest of it will be cured as long as they idiots in another country hold on to our revenues, our resources, and make the decisions on spending for us. Right, money, uh, Monday, Alex Salmon says that the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, is best placed to lead Scotland in the next Parliament. In an interview with Channel 4, Mr Salmon says his party is a list party and will concentrate in building an indie supermajority. It will be interesting to see what policies the Alba Party bring forward in their manifesto. That's if they get a manifesto published within the next six weeks. Another interesting thing about that is I think it's a bloody dark all of a sudden. Um, another interesting thing about that is a, um, with the Alba Party um, and a manifestos, the Alba Party have got until Wednesday to have their candidates declared. If they don't have their candidates declared on Wednesday, then they won't be bloody running. Right, Monday, Professor John Curtis he states that Mr Salmond and his Alba Party will need to garner 10% support to win any seats in the list system across Scotland. Mr Curtis says, keep an eye on the polls to see if Alba polls in any of uh, the polls leading up to the election. Davy says, um, I'll be watching the polls because so far none of the pop-up parties have polled at all. None of them. So it'll be interesting to see if Mr Salmond is, is popular enough to break that trend, but I said that when I fl flipped my lid out last night, he's all heard me. Um, Monday, AFI and ISP are out of the running for the Holyrood election. AFI disbanded and ISP said they were standing down to clear the field for the Alapa party. The Alapa party have a, until Wednesday um, this week to nominate candidates before the closing deadline. All right, so I've already been out that week, all right. Monday, the mainstream media um, tells us that Tommy Sheridan has joined the Alapa party and that a Scottish boxer, uh, Alex Arthur, has joined the Alapa party too, all right? 
Monday, Liberty Steel pleased to the UK plea to the UK Treasury for 170 million um, bailout um, is turned down by Chancellor Rishi Sunak. Liberty Steel employ 5,000 people directly and about a further 2,000 people indirectly in the supply chain. I don't quite get what Sunak uh, is up to here, as Liberty Steel is an, is an important part of the UK's industrial infrastructure. Okay. Um, I guess uh, refusing the bailout will allow corporate vultures um, to buy up Liberty Steel on the cheap. Um, eh, will it be asset stripped or will it, will it survive? Who knows? But what we do know is that there's an awful lot of livelihoods in the state at stake here with Liberty Steel and a huge chunk of the UK's um, um, eh, industrial infrastructure as well. Okay. Monday. Um, Historic Environment Scotland announces plans for a, um, a phased return of its uh, visitor attractions. 26th of April, we'll see museums reopen, and by Friday the 30th of April, castles and abbeys to reopen. Histor Historical Envi Environment Scotland advises there will be reduced capacity at sites in line with the Scottish Government's COVID guidelines. So there we go, folks. Country who sees castles, um, abbeys, all these visitor attractions to reopen um, by the 30th. As I say, uh, travel restrictions end on the 26th of April, so they're opening their uh, um, facilities so that all of us who can't get out of the UK or out of Scotland can have a wee look around about castles and historical sites. All right. Monday, world leaders are calling for an, international, uh, an internationally agreed strategy on future health crises. Bojo the Clown joins French President Macron and German Chancellor uh, um, uh, Merkel in calling for an internationally agreed strategy um, on, on future health crises. Um, so what they're, what they're talking about is uh, um, they're talking about an international treaty where they all agree a strategy going forward in the event of further uh, health uh, problems like the pandemic we're facing at the moment. All right, I guess it'll give them a chance to uh, the fair distribution of vaccines, stop all the stussy sort of stuff we've got going on between the UK and the EU block at the moment. All right. Right, Monday in the House of Thieves and Carpet Baggers, the Red Tories call for the um, Committee on Standards in Public Life to look into um, reports that a while a PM, David Cameron, gave unlimited access um, to Whitehall to Lex Greenshill, um, the founder of the failed Greenshill Finance. Recent reports say David Cameron lobbied Chancellor Rishi Sunak to bail Greenshill out. Now, the request was denied by Mr Sunak. Greenshill Finance's collapse is at the core of the Liberty Steel problems as Greenshill, uh, Greenshill um, f uh, was a Liberty's financial backers. Liberty Steel may need to be broken up and sold off to cover Greenshill debts uh, as the administrators do their job. All right. Monday in international news, Suez Canal reopens and the George Floyd trial gets underway, OK? Monday, um, Evergreen, which was lodged across the Suez Canal, was freed at 15.05 our time. Oh, bloody terrible white today. At 15.05 our time. So that's the Suez Canal up and running again, so all that merchandise that's been lying about on boats and no making it to our homes... We'll start making it back into retail outlets and to our homes shortly, all right? And Monday, um, Derek is at Ch Chauvin, um, goes on trial for the murder of uh, stro murder stroke manslaughter of George Floyd in M Minneapolis, USA. The white police officer um, stands accused of killing Mr Floyd, a man of colour, by kneeling on his, his neck for 9 minutes and 26 seconds, um, preventing him from breathing properly. He passed out and then he died, all right. The killing of Mr Floyd led to mass protests worldwide and the death shone a light on international uh, um, institutional racism worldwide. So one good thing came uh, for the, the poor passing of that fella and that was the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, doggy. Right, where are we? Let's move on to this morning and what the papers have got to say. 
Right, but before I move on to what the papers I've got to say, folks, I mean, a lot of you have seen that video I made last night getting off my dinger at this carry on with people fighting over uh, the Alapa party and uh, um, uh, the SNP. You know, people vote the way they want to vote. Vote with your conscience, vote with a well informed um, brief in your head, having read manifestos and having looked at your local situation. Just stop bloody well fighting with each other. I'm not going to get into it too deep. I did a video, it's doing there below you on this timeline um, last night where I went half my dinger because since Friday, all I've seen is friends battling with each other. It's not necessary, folks. Right? You know how you're going to vote, you don't need to tell the bloody rest. It's what happened to the good old days when it used to be a private thing, you know? Uh, I keep breaking up there. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, on to this morning and what the papers have to say. Okay. The Scotsman goes on. New vaccine needed in a year to stop virus variants. So what the Scotsman's saying is that hey, we're not getting vaccinated this year, but we're going to have to do it all again once all the, all the variants are known about, all right? The Daily Fail goes on. Now the gloves really are off. And that's a allegedly um, Miss Sturgeon had a swipe at Mr Salmon yesterday in her closing speech at her a, um, at the digital conference where she said that politics isn't a game. And of course, when you get right down to it, the Alba party and, and uh, all, the, all the union parties, they have been gaming the system here on the list. So maybe the Alba party might pick up a seat or two. Right, uh, the eye goes on. Sturgeon and Sarwar hit out at Salmond. Didn't quite get that one. The record, Salmond must uh, say sorry to women. I don't think Mr Salmond would agree with that. The National goes on. Sturgeon ready to deliver on new Indy ballot. Right, and that's a First Minister in a speech to conference yesterday said that if the people vote for it, India F2 will harm. Right, the Times goes on. Um, Sturgeon's rehashed a cancer vow is shameful. And this is uh, um, Anna, uh, Anna Sarwar, the Red Tory leader, saying that uh, Sturgeon's vow to um, revamp cancer services is just a rehash and old policy. Well, maybe it's just an old policy that hasn't quite been put in place yet. All right, the Telegraph goes on. World leaders call for pandem pandemic pact. Um, and a, we just spoke about that. They want to get an international treaty put together in order to deal with future pandemics and things like that. All right. The sun goes on. COVID breach, uh, breach uh, Nat Swin trouble. And apparently Mr Swinney was talking to a group of four people yesterday and somebody snapped his picture. I don't know if it was social distancing or no, but... Uh, outdoors, you're allowed to meet four people, throw John Swinney into the pack, and that's five. So Mr Swinney had to apologise while campaigning for talking to four people at the same time. All right? Mental. Right, and the Herald goes on. Funding threat to plans for a um, Grange Mouth clean-up. Right. Now, apparently, funding that was supposed to be uh, forthcoming for the Treasury at Westminster to clean up the petrochemical plant at the Grangemouth is to be given a plant in the north of England as opposed to Grangemouth. Uh, right, somebody calling me a clown, Diane. Don't worry about it. People have called me worse than a clown, Jesus Christ. You know, nothing wrong with being called a clown. Hey. So, uh, the Looney paper, the Looney Rag Express goes on. We don't need EU. 60 million new jobs to be made in Britain. There you go. I mean, the Daily Feel and the Express are just loony publications, so they are. The Metro goes on. 9 minutes and 29 seconds. And that's the video of uh, the police officer kneeling on George Floyd's neck. And the Star goes on. Oh, you've got to love the Star, haven't you? The Star goes on. Dad Bods beats Jim Gods. So apparently, women forget. Uh, women prefer ordinary-looking men rather than pumped-up, beefed-up gym bunnies. So there you have it, folks. So there you go. That's what we've got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Eh, get called worse than a clown in the house. Eh? You're no kidding. I get called worse than a clown in the house. I bet you's all day too. <laughs> So that's the stories I picked out for you um, to, um, to cover the day. As I say, it's all going to be campaign stuff here in Scotland and Mayor Slees and a corruption.
Ipswich and Westminster. I mean, on Sunday, uh, because yesterday, because of the shortness of time, I did drop a few articles that I was covering, like the Good Law Project um, uh, challenge in Bojo's cabinet and the government on their COVID contracts um, and their what, they, what they're calling their chummy. Um, they're uh, passing out contracts to their chums, so the Good Law Project um, are taking them to court. So see, yesterday they cut out quite a few articles to make it fit the 30 minutes. Um, did I see it? Uh, did I see what? But I missed something there. Geraldine, you're scunnered with the election stuff. Come on, elections are exciting. Gets the blood pumping. Um... So, as I say, um, I'll reiterate what, I'll reiterate what I had to say last night. See this carry on with the fighting between the SNP supporters and the Alpha Party supporters. Just chuck it. We're all friends. As I said last night, I've marched with all sorts. Socialists, CND, Greens. I've even met a few Tories on the independence marches, believe it or not, folks. And I've protested all sorts of things with all sorts of people. You know, the bedroom tax. Um, as I say, CND. I'm a serial, serial protester. <laughs> Behave yourself, we're all friends, all right? Right, let's get the public service notices. I need to get back to work. I know this is only a short one again today, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to cut it down to 30 minutes or within 30 minutes, all right? So remember, um, give your support to the independent media. We're especially needing it at the moment, okay? Broadcast in Scotland, Independence Live, Indie Live Radio, Caledon Media, iScot Magazine, the National Newspaper, Independence Vloggers and Bloggers. Leslie Riddock does a cracking podcast. The wee Ginger Doug does some cracking blogs. Um, so, you know, if these guys are making a living at it and you can afford to th uh, throw a, sh a few shekels their way, then please do. All right. Now, the next thing is facts. All right. I know Mary Marys have had the injection. But that's only injection number one. Apparently we need two to have any proper immunity. And according to what the Herald's saying today, we're going to need to get through it all again next year. So, facts. Face covering, coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. And... Book a test if you need one. This virus hasn't gone away, folks. Look after yourselves. And I'll speak to you all tomorrow for, what, for whatever stories we can dig up that are of interest about the day. Okay, have a nice day.